of all time, there's no doubt about it, his, uh, his natural ability is, is second to none and, and he's one of the few players that I would actually, you know, sit and watch his match. Good evening, no need for Stephen Hendry to buy a ticket tonight because the last of the quarter-finals in this year's Benson and Hedges Masters features the latest episode in that long-running saga of Jimmy White against Stephen Hendry. They've been playing each other for 10 years now, a total of 29 matches including four world finals. As you'd expect, Henry has had the upper hand in matches between the pair, as well as those four victories over Jimmy White in the Crucible final. The Scot has also beaten Jimmy three times here at the Masters. That match is coming up, but first, this afternoon's quarter-final result, which ended, as you can see, in disappointment for Steve Davis, who fought hard, but eventually went out to Alan McManus by six frames to four. So there's how our quarter-finals have gone. Ronnie O'Sullivan is still suffering with that sore foot. He's been diagnosed as having damaged a ligament but he will definitely play tomorrow against Andy Hicks in the afternoon semi-final. The second semi will feature McManus against the winner of tonight's match, Stephen Hendry or Jimmy White. So, Jimmy White looking for his first win over the world champion in a major match since 1991. Let's join it at the start of a possible 11 frames. Commentary from John Spencer and Clive Everton. In the first fight, Stephen Hendry to break. That was a dreadful safety for starters. Yes, very tentative shot from Jimmy. Stephen only has to knock this red in. Black over the corner pocket. Now I think Stephen will be going into the pack. Sixteen. Played in such a way that he was always going to have a shot at the red that was already loose. Stephen Henry, 
70. Not a ball that uh, one would expect Hendry to miss. Yes, a put an awful lot of pressure out there tonight. It's going to be very helpful to the first one that can string the sides of break together and that, get that queuing action going and a bit of confidence. Big crowd here in the Wembley Conference Centre tonight. which uh, holds 2,600 and it's full. Jimmy White, eight. And uh, the Jimmy White supporters who are here in numbers will be very disappointed to see him miss that ball. Jimmy White has played hundreds of big matches, but He's obviously feeling a bit nervous in this one. One. Yes, and we see mistakes from both the players here. This time Stephen hasn't gone far enough on the blue to be able to split the reds. And it doesn't look as though there's any red to follow this blue. to play the safety from short range off the blue rather than pop the blue for the five extra points and return to Bork off the reds. Yes, yeah, sometimes that's a good ploy that your opponent to open the reds but Jimmy's played such a good shot there, Stephen will be wishing now he'd potted the blue and played the safety shot himself. idea was to swerve the cue ball slightly to find the edge of the outside red but he overdid the swerve and hit the reds from the back. Yes I'm lucky to cover that red up but there is a red just above the black if Jimmy can knock this in and get on the colour we have a great chance. Not enough angle to play position or three cushions. Seven. And possibly get the cue ball closer to the red. Eight. But having managed to leave a straight red, that at least reduced some of the difficulty.
and he had to pop the red to gain automatic position. 50. Possible reds to middle for later, but this is a good one to get rid of because it makes another red possible to the same corner. Yes, the only problem, of course, not easy with the spider. Well, he's not quite played that hard enough, would like to have been straighter on the black. May I have to screw off the black into that red or the pink to hold for his next red? Well, he'd be disappointed Thank with you. that, playing for the red into the right centre. Finished a bit in no man's land, but he has a red into the yellow pocket if he wishes. And can screw back for the black. Well, the way he's walking up there. He's looking at a thing cut here into his left hand black pocket. This is a fine shot. And I think that was a totally Your wrong life. shot for Jimmy to play. Hendry's turn to finish short of ideal position. Fourteen. Fifteen. Well, perfect angle and black for Stephen to do whatever he wishes. Can't see if any of the reds will go into this right-hand corner. certainly split the movie wishes. Obviously the red goes into the centre. 20. 
22. You have to say you'd make Stephen a strong favourite now for this frame. 30. A very dubious shot selection from Jimmy White. Let Hendry in for this contribution. 36. Yellow and green would be sufficient. Forty two. Forty four. Yes, White's last real hope was that uh, Henry would cannon either the brown or green as he played in and out of balk from the blue. But he never looked like doing that. Fifty one. So now Hendry has the opening frame in his pocket. Fifty six. Both players made early mistakes in this frame. Sixty two. And the first frame was the injury has settled and secured it with a 69 clearance. red that he'll certainly take on. Screw round behind the back of the black. Something distracted Hendry there. Maybe uh, a spectator coming in late. Doesn't look as though any red is potable after this one. So again, wow. it'll be into the pack. You always need that little bit of luck here. Nineteen.
Baik. Thirty-three. Thirty-four. Well, not quite the desired position. Going to be hampered with his skewing. And will certainly take it on. Forty-two. Slightly the wrong side of the blue. <laughs> Little smile there as a mobile phone goes off. It's not for him. into much more difficult brown. It appears to be green. So I'm trying to force the green in. Stick this well to get the top on it. Well, we couldn't do it that better. And finished perfect on the red oh, into the left hand black pocket. Forty six. Hendry's sixty nine clearance in the opening frame. Fifty three. Got him into the groove. He's looked very impressive in this break. He's overcome several difficulties. Yes, and of course this is from Gimme's break-off shot. Fifty-four. will certainly be hurting Jimmy this. Yeah. Sixty-one. This black would leave white needing a snooker. Yes, and when he gets in the groove, Stephen's control of that white ball is tremendous. I think we'll see him now try and go into the three reds around the pink spot. Just 
slid past 77. the one that he wanted to hit. Missed the three reds this time. Eighty-five. Terrific long red. Kept the break going there. Eighty-six. And except for the position of the pink, I would predict a total clearance here. He rounded off his first round win over John Higgins. 93. With a total clearance of 144. 94. Yes, that's another 70 this evening and what a break this has been and to work all the way never had any, anything simple in the break but maintain the position 100% 107 109 112. This one is going to have to really start to produce a couple of shots to clear the table. 116. Got the right angle on the blue for pink, but the shot from pink to black is going to be very difficult. 121. of his career with Stephen Hendry a 2-0 lead. And Hendry was then to go on to uh, score another century in the next frame, a 1-2-7, to go 3-0 ahead. Uh, there was a 16th century of the tournament so far, and Stephen Hendry, as you can see, had three of the best five, including that 1-4-4, which is very much in line for the £10,000 high break prize. A 43 and a 65 then gave Hendry the fourth frame, and by the time he had gone 41 nil up in the fifth, he had set a new world record, that of 487 consecutive points scored without Jimmy White putting a ball. So, Henry leading by five frames to nil, and Jimmy White, whose hopes had been so high at the start of the match, was staring a whitewash in the face. Here's frame number six coming, White with huge problems. Let's rejoin our commentators, John Spencer and Clive Everton. Thank you. The sixth frame, Jimmy White to break. Well, again, Jimmy left the same shot on. You can't afford to leave Stephen when he's in this sort of form. These chances from the break off. Six. 
Sabi? Twenty-two. Twenty-three. Jimmy White fell five nil behind Third. in only sixty-four minutes. And uh, it's well within the bounds of possibility. This bunch of reds opens as it should. It's right to won't get another shot. 36. Yes, and can't, certainly can't open them any better than that. But again, this is from Jimmy's break-off shot. Second time we've seen it tonight. Yes, in the second frame, White broke off. And Hendry knocked the lot in, 134. Sixty-eight. Sixty-nine. So White already needs a snooker. And this has been not so much a victory 76. as a demolition. Yes, I think it's also been one of Stephen's best performances. Just made the game look so simple. 84. When he's gone into the balls. We all know it's 85. not. Hendry finished the opening frame with a 69 clearance. He made 134 total clearance in the second. 93. A break of 127 in the third. Breaks of 43 and 65 in the fourth. Ninety-eight. 41 in the fifth 
which has been the closest frame. 99. And uh, this is going to be his third century of the evening. One hundred and five. Stephen Hendry, one hundred and five. In only seventy one minutes, Stephen Hendry beats Jimmy White by six frames to nil, making three centuries in a virtuoso display. It looked as if he was playing well and, and probably should have won the first frame. Um, got out of position when he was, you know, I say looked like winning it, and I, I managed to win the break with a 60, which you know settled me down completely. Um, but as I say, I won the next two frames without him getting to the table, and I think that's when the crowd thing starts to get, you know, more against them and for him because they're, they're cheering him on and they want him to do well, and it's, you know, it, it's hard enough for him, I think, you know, mm. coming to the table cold and, and uh, you know, I mean, they're, they're great that they're, they're only doing what they think is, is going to spur him on, but uh, to be honest, I think it goes against them instead of for him. He played good, you know, I'm, I'm disappointed, but the, the main thing that um, my game is coming together and uh, I'm going to, you know, I'll have a day off tomorrow. You can't play Jimmy in London and expect to, you know, have, have them, the crowd rooting for you, but they're, they're, they're a great crowd at Wembley. They, um, as I say, they, they respond to good play. And uh, it, it was it was a great atmosphere to play snooker under. I even felt at four 0 that I was going to win. I feel this I feel this good, you know, because I'm practicing this hard. But um, he's played fantastic stuff, you know. He punished me every time I missed. Well, I, I can I can always improve. I missed a couple. Yeah. And that's a frightening thought for his fellow professionals, isn't it? A performance of stunning authority by the world champion who will now meet fellow Scott Alan McManus in tomorrow night's second semi-final. Before that, of course, the two Englishmen, Ronnie O'Sullivan against Andy Hicks in the first semi-final. You can see that tomorrow afternoon on Grandstand. Until then, from all of us here at Wembley, goodbye. <laughs>